Hello everyone, Dan Williams here with Repro Products and DLT Solutions. Today we'll be reviewing Autodesk's data management solution, Vault 2016, and the wealth of benefits it brings the typical office environment. You know, during these presentations, the questions often come up. Why Vault? What is it that makes Vault better than what I'm doing now? Well, if you're like most organizations, you're simply saving your files to a network drive and you've just accepted the limitations that result. As opposed to a network file system, Vault offers an unlimited number of data fields with which to describe your files, far more options to secure users' access to them, a true check-in, check-out system which, among other things, prevents simultaneous or redundant modification of documents, automatic retention of previous document versions, and, unlike the vast majority of other document management systems, Vault is aware of the complex relationship that potentially exists among files. It can actually manage and repair the links that exist, for instance, between emails and their attachments. Finally, if you're like me, it helps wean me from my dependence on Outlook to manage files that I've been sent as attachments. Admit it, how many of us have returned to the same email over and over again to find a file someone sent as an attachment? But more on that later. If you are simply saving files to a drive, then you really only have two tools for communicating everything someone might need to know about your documents. One, obviously, is the file name. Organizations expend a great deal of time and effort just formulating all-encompassing naming conventions for their files. The other is the folder's names and their structure. You may not know this, but considered altogether, the file and folder structure have a physical limit of 255 characters. Even if you have a well-thought-out naming convention and standardized folder structure that you meticulously follow, the result is often something so elaborate that only the most familiar of users can successfully navigate it. There is another problem. What if you want to maintain certain important milestone versions of your document or group of documents? Say, the state of a project's documentation as submitted on a particular date. Again, the only two methods you have are to rename the documents or move them to a separate folder structure itself named in such a way as to communicate what was significant about that version. You can see how this almost inevitably results in the propagation of multiple poorly defined versions of the same documents across your folder structure. At that point, it's almost anybody's best guess as to which is the most appropriate to use for a given request. I mentioned earlier that Vault gives you an unlimited number of searchable indexed fields with which to describe your documents. Files are much more easily located in a manner we are likely already familiar with from the way we manage our emails. Searching. If you were looking for an old email, you most likely wouldn't sift through weeks or months of emails. You would be more inclined to do a search. Here in Outlook, I can easily search for emails from one of my coworkers. The same applies to Vault. Searching is a much more efficient method of locating documents. Instead of just searching for the folder or file name the way you would in a file system, Vault allows you to search and sort based on much more descriptive fields. Vault provides managed secure access by way of a true check-in, check-out system that prevents simultaneous or redundant edits to files and roles that determine whom or even when they can be modified. Think about how useful it would be to know who was working on a given file and how long they've been working on it. Further, since Vault retains the version history of documents, it would no longer be necessary to rename or move them in order to preserve milestones. Think of each document being multiple versions deep. Vault even remembers which version of each XREF went with a particular referencing drawing. In this case, version 1 of these X references is used by version 2 of the drawing. Let's get a little more familiar with Vault's interface. We've made several references already to the similarity both in form and function between the primary Vault client and Microsoft Outlook's email client. On the left we have Outlook and on the right Vault. Notice that both have a browsing area for arranging emails or files in a familiar folder structure to the left. Uh, they both have a listing area that you can browse through your available emails or your available files. 
And down at the bottom they have a reading pane that you can use to view a selected document. Now in the case of a drawing or a document, there's a lot more to know about it than just reading it. Uh, for instance, this particular drawing uses a number of other drawings as x-references. It might in turn be used someplace else. We might also be interested in its history. Notice that there are two versions of this document. It might also be involved in a change order. The same search techniques you're familiar with in Outlook work in Vault. For instance, if I search for one of my co-workers using a modifier and DLT, I quickly get a list of emails that refer to both of them. I can do the same thing in Vault. For instance, if I search for any document that Bob is associated with and involves construction, I quickly narrow my search down to a single document. Something I like to do a lot in Outlook is to customize the email property grid. You can easily do that by right-clicking over any column and using the field chooser uh, to add another column, let's say recipient name. And in this way, you can display who the recipient is uh, as well as who the email is from. Well, the same thing is true of Vault. Of course, Vault has a lot more properties uh, that we can associate with individual documents than, um, than Outlook does. All I have to do is right-click over a column, select the Customize View, and then I can choose from all these different fields uh, to add columns. And I can move them up and down in the list. and then we have a custom property grid for our document. In fact, most of the tricks and techniques you know and value from using Outlook will work in Vault as well. Vault provides nearly limitless options when it comes to searching for your documents or, for that matter, information about your documents. Techniques you are familiar with from Outlook work in Vault, but are really only scratching at the surface of its actual capabilities. For one thing, Vault has a potentially unlimited number of fields from which to search, and if that wasn't enough, for supported document types, Vault can actually index their content. That's right, searches in Vault actually return results if the key term exists anywhere in documents like PDFs, AutoCAD drawings, Microsoft Office documents, and many others. For more sophisticated searches, you can use operators like AND, OR, and even not, just like you do in your favorite internet search engines like Google, Bing, or Yahoo. To get more precise results, you can search specific fields for key terms, and for searches you might want to do on a regular basis, Vault allows you to create saved searches. Searching a Windows folder structure can sometimes be slow because in many cases the system has to reach out and touch every single file in the scope of the search. This is not the case in Vault. All of your vaulted data is indexed in SQL databases so that the search results are nearly instantaneous. Speaking of searching, the techniques you're already familiar with from Outlook and File Explorer work even better in Vault. Not only do they return results from folder and file names, we have all of these additional properties we can search. And the results are almost instantaneous because we're searching data that has been indexed in a SQL database. By default, when I search the vault for the word grading, the results returned are only those documents that had one of their many searchable fields match grading. But it gets much better than this. Vault can actually index the content of documents. If I enable content searches and repeat the search, you can see I get many more hits These are files that have grading either in one of their searchable fields or, as is the case with this spreadsheet, reference grading as part of their content.
If what you desire are more precise results, Vault allows you to search specific fields for values. Our previous searches searched all available fields and content for the word grading. Here I am searching specifically the author field for Levy and only the file name field for the word grading. Consider the circumstance where there is a search you execute on a regular basis. Vault allows you to create multi-criteria searches then save them to use over and over again. Here I'm again going to search the author field for Levy and the file name field for grading. But this time I will also search for files that have a lifecycle state work in progress. These represent files that have yet to meet my company's rigorous release standards. And then I'll save this as Levy's incomplete grading documents. And you can see the results. What if we are also interested in keeping track of how many documents Levy has completed? I can simply edit the existing search, modify one of the criteria, and save the search to a new name. We'll call it Levy's Complete Grading Documents. Now I can also track Levi's progress completing his grading documents. It is important not to underestimate the value of these results. Consider how often you are asked for a list of or report on all of the documents meeting certain criteria. We have already seen how easy it is to customize the property grid. The search results can be exported to Excel for further formatting. Vault is also tightly integrated with the Microsoft Office suite of applications. Each has its own add-in that allows it to access the Vault directly. Again, there is no need to use the dedicated Vault client if you don't want to. One of the things I particularly like about the way this is implemented is that it stays out of your way until needed. You can work in the fashion you're already familiar with. Go ahead and save to My Documents or your desktop the way you always have. You needn't interact with Vault until you're ready to check the file in. Vault's integration with Microsoft's Outlook email client may be particularly useful to many users. Emails can be easily archived in Vault along with their attachments. Each of the Microsoft Office applications has a ribbon dedicated to Vault. It allows you to accomplish typical Vault tasks like logging in and out, opening directly from Vault, refreshing your local copy and checking files in and out. I really like the way that I don't have to commit to adding a file to Vault until I'm ready. I can save early iterations of the file anywhere I want. Here I have a file that I've been working on for a while. It's been previously saved to the My Documents folder. Most data management systems require you to fill out an index card prior to creating any new document to be added. This implies that you even know the required information that early in the process. Now that I'm confident the file is ready to be shared, I simply check it into the vault. Notice how I am prompted for an appropriate location to save it in vault. I'm given the opportunity to add comments describing what is unique about this version. Vault will even prompt 
me offering to delete the document at its original location to avoid the confusion two files with the same name on my computer is likely to create. In today's world, often an email could be thought of as almost a contract. Emails are regularly the source of critical documents. Often they give you direction or even permission on how to proceed with critical tasks. Regardless, it is important that they be retained as part of the documentation of a project in the case that they need to be referenced in the future. An Exchange server has an unlimited amount of storage. As a result, we often have to delete or place an offline archive emails we might very well need at some point. By adding these emails to Vault, they are retained as part of the permanent documentation of a project. Their content gets indexed and becomes searchable as well as any other properties you care to add to them. Here I have an email that I have received explaining what is expected of me in an event I'll be attending. Just like the other Microsoft Office applications, Outlook has a ribbon devoted to Vault. It allows me to check the email directly into Vault. There will be an opportunity to describe what is unique about this version. I'll choose where to put the documents in my Vault. Notice that the attachments are along for the ride. Once the email has been added to Vault, I can move the attachments to a more appropriate location. I could even rename them if necessary. Vault will always remember that they were originally received as an email attachment, and the link between them and the email will forever be retained. We are already aware that Vault allows us to assign an unlimited number of properties to our documents. Editing those values could become very tedious. Fortunately, Vault allows us to edit multiple data fields across many files at once in a familiar spreadsheet-like format. When you combine that with the fact that the fields can be linked to the content of documents, you get a very powerful method for updating that content and making sure that related documents, say all of those associated with a single project, are uniformly modified. Simply select a range of files, either from a single folder or perhaps from the results of a search. Then select the properties in the property grid you want to modify. The table that results allows you to use familiar tools. Here I will type Sleepy Hollow in one of the project cells. Then I can use a technique you're probably already familiar with from Microsoft Excel to paint that value across more cells. I'll do the same for the manager field. We'll make Ichabod Crane the manager for this project. As you can see, we have a number of other familiar tools for populating cells. Once I select OK, the files are updated. If those fields are linked to content in a document like attributes in a title block, they will be updated automatically. The ability to check documents in and out is fundamental to document control. Preventing simultaneous or redundant document revisions could really be considered the least of its benefits. With Vault, checking in a document gets you a local copy and marks the document as reserved by you on the server. Checking the document in versions the document while retaining the previously checked in versions. This synchronization between Vault and the user's local workspace has a number of benefits. Unlike most document management systems, Vault does not require the user to maintain a continuous connection with its server. You can check the document you need out, unplug from the network, and travel off-site if you wish. Just plug back into the network when you return and check the files back in. Vault even has a utility called Workspace Sync, which compares your local workspace with the Vault and removes any extra copies you may have accumulated. In the browsing area, Vault presents us with a familiar folder structure so that we can organize our documents. The structure in the browser is mapped to a location on your hard drive we often call a workspace. Think of it as your own personal sandbox. 
Whenever you check out or otherwise retrieve files from the vault, enough of the folder structure is replicated in your workspace to contain the files. Files you have a local copy of have a bubble in this column. Clear bubbles mean your local copy is identical to the latest version in Vault. A check mark means that it is checked out to you. Green means that your local copy is newer than the one in the Vault. These and other indicators mean you will always know what the status of your local files are relative to the most recent versions in Vault. Inevitably, you will accumulate out-of-date files in your workspace. With Vault, this is nothing to worry about because of a feature called Workspace Sync. This feature compares your workspace with the most recent version of all the documents in Vault and based on a number of criteria suggests files that should be automatically deleted. Thus you are assured that the copies of files in your workspace are always up to date. One of the most challenging aspects of managing documents is their efficient reuse. We've previously discussed some of the issues related to renaming files in a regular file system. When you add the requirement of copying and renaming multiple files, those issues compound exponentially. Vaulted files can be copied in mass. Vault provides tools for renaming them during the process that will automatically add a desired prefix or suffix, or you can execute a find and replace. Uniquely, Vault will automatically repair any cross-references it encounters. Consider the case where we have a project folder with a variety of file types. My intent is to copy files from the Brigadoon construction project to its maintenance project. Some of the files should be copied to new names so that ongoing modifications during the maintenance of the property does not update construction documents of record. Other documents should simply be reused because, while they're still important to the maintenance project, they will only be included for reference and will not be modified. I can begin by simply selecting some of the files I want to copy and using the context menu to copy design. This launches a standalone utility which allows me to specify which actions will be taken. I'll be copying most of the files to a new location in my vault, which I can specify here. My initial selection was only a small subset of the files needed. I can easily add files from other folders and give them unique target folders in the maintenance project. It makes sense for me to include files from the spill control and communications folders as they are relevant to maintenance. While I'm choosing in this case to copy the vast majority of files, Note that I'm going to reuse a number of emails associated with the project. It doesn't make sense to rename an email. However, any of the files that were originally received as attachments of those emails may need to be copied to a new name. I'll give them a target folder called Utilities. Notice that I can specify new names for the attachments while leaving the names of the emails unchanged. I can confirm which files are, uh, will be getting copied and which will be reused. Then I can use a variety of tools to rename all of the files at once. In this case, I will do a simple find and replace of instances of the word Brigadoon and replace it with the word Brigadoon Maintenance. Before committing the changes, I can preview what the final folder structure and file names will look like. Once I'm satisfied with the settings, I'll hit the big blue arrow to execute the copy design. The process takes place on the server so that even when I'm manipulating very large data sets, no local resources are consumed and I can continue working. Let's take a look at the results. If I now browse to the target folder in Vault, you can see all of the files have been copied and renamed. Notice that even though the utilities documents have been renamed, they still retain the link with their parent emails. I'll always be able to tell that they were originally received as an email attachment. This capability is really without peer in the industry. If you have seen this segment on copy design, then you know what a powerful feature that is. 
but sometimes you simply want to rename files that already exist. This could be due to a variety of reasons, not the least of which is that, among many organizations, the final name of a document isn't assigned until very late in the release process. Vault has a utility that not only allows you to rename multiple files at once using methods like find and replace, it actually repairs any document cross-references it encounters during the process. Here we have a folder full of documents that were originally received as email attachments. Vault is aware of the relationship between the documents and their parent emails. There are multiple cross-references represented here. I can select all the files and use the context menu to rename them. This time I will use find and replace to change the word utility to utilities. I'll also use it to get rid of the word new. When I hit finish, Vault will actually go out and find all of the files that reference these files and repair them. Days or even weeks of work accomplished in moments. In this case we can see that the files still retain the relationship with the referencing emails, and the referencing emails have been repaired to use the newly renamed references. Vault is pretty much unique in its ability to manage references in this fashion. Vault Professional includes the ability to access the Vault with a web browser based client. Regardless of the number of Vault licenses you have, an unlimited number of users can access your Vault to view, print, and mark up documents via web browsers like Internet Explorer, Chrome, Firefox, and Safari. Though not designed to, it even works in the browsers of many mobile devices. If you currently use dedicated seats of AutoCAD, AutoCAD LT, or other CAD products for these purposes, it's very possible that Vault could make them unnecessary. Since it's based on a technology most users are already familiar with, and takes full advantage of common browsing techniques like internet favorites and copy-pasting web addresses, your users should immediately feel right at home with little to no training. Equipped with only the appropriate credentials and a simple web browser, I can access my Vault. This client is designed to provide read-only access. With it, I can quickly and efficiently browse Vault's folder structure. It is capable of the same sophisticated searches we saw earlier from the primary Vault client. In fact, a search we used earlier returns the same results. Notice as I mouse over a document in the list, controls are exposed. I can use them to preview a document or download it. Downloading works precisely the way you would expect it to based on your internet browsing experiences. Files you download are read-only, discouraging you from saving them with their original names. These search results, just like everything else in this client, is a URL. You could easily copy the address and send it to someone else in an email, effectively giving them the list without a single file being sent. If I browse to a document's homepage, you can see that in addition to the thumbnail, I can review the document's properties. I can view its version history and see any other documents it references. In this case, this is an AutoCAD drawing with two X references. If I select one of the X references, I am transferred to its document homepage where I can easily transfer back to the referencing or parent document. If I select to preview this AutoCAD drawing, a full feature viewer is launched in another tab. In addition to providing excellent viewing tools, it can measure or even print the document. For many document types, this viewer also includes extensive markup tools. Just one suggested scenario has me making a note on the drawing, saving my markups, and then emailing them to a coworker.
you can imagine all of the potential workflows these tools could support. Consider another scenario. This time I'm an inspector who needs to fill a PDF form during a walkthrough. I can use the browser-based client to simply download the form which I can fill right in the browser window. Once completed, I can save it to another name. Print it or share it using any one of several options. Thanks for taking the time to spend with us today. If you like what you've seen so far, and you'd like to know more, contact the Autodesk government team at DLT Solutions. Remember you can also follow us on Twitter, LinkedIn, and YouTube.